Christy. Welcome to the space. I wanted to create some artist fundamental videos that can hopefully help you along your art journey. Whether you're a beginner artist or a more seasoned artist, I hope that you can take some of these tips and apply them to your own journey and your own artwork. I was a fine arts and art history major, so I did go to traditional art school where we learned a lot of principles and background behind color theory, composition, um, and I want to try to take, I want to give you that information in my blog, but through these videos, I want to take a little bit different approach um, because although it's really important to know the principles and, and to have a grasp of them, I feel like sometimes it can, um, it can limit you as well. So in this video about color theory, I really want to go into more of the psychology and the impact that you can have on your viewer with your colors and your color palettes, um, as well as where you can find inspiration for your palette. Um, and, and that will evolve, but I love diving into the history of color, um, what it represents in different countries and different cultures and, and how it's similar in some and different in others. So let's jump right in to our lesson on color theory. So let's talk about some of those principles before we dive a little bit more into the psychology and the background of colors. So I have here a pocket color wheel, and this is super handy. I have um, a link to this on my blog, but you can use this um, to really be a great guide for you. So there's three primary properties. So the primary colors, which are the red, the blue and the yellow. Those are your primary colors. Then you have your secondary, which is your purple or your orange, excuse me, your violet or purple, and then your green. Those are your secondary. And then everything in between, the six others, the red, orange, yellow, orange, those are your tertiary colors. Um, and that's important because, you know, it's just great to know how to use them. So if you want to start with your primary colors and then add a pop of secondary, secondary color, um, you can create these almost color harmonies when you know these basics. Um, and then we have what we would call our complementary colors. And these are opposite each other on the color wheel. So you have your violet is completely opposite the yellow. So those are complementary colors. Your red is complementary to your green. Um, your orange is complementary or across from your blue. And then your analogous colors are your blue and blue violet. So they're right next to each other on the color wheel. So I often use complementary colors when I want to create contrast in my work per, per se. Um, and then if you want kind of a more harmonious look to your piece, you might want to use colors that are an analogous and, and cool colors. You hear this often. And, and what does that mean always? Um, sometimes it's difficult, but in general, your red all the way down to this yellow green right here are going to be your warm colors. So anything on this half is more of your warm colors. And then on this half from all the way from your red violet to your green is going to be your cool colors. And I'll have this on the blog as well. Um, but that's really important. So um, is your piece, you want it to be very warmth and you want to create a certain mood with it um, versus like an ocean scene. Do you want it to all be cool colors um, or depending on the weather or the person's um, demeanor? Maybe you're doing a portrait. Do you want that person to really portray some warmth um, and then have the background cool? Um, so all of that can really, really impact your viewer um, in the way that you use the colors. As we talked about, color can 
really show emotion, um, things that are intangible to us sometimes. So I love the psychology behind colors and the history. Um, how is it different in one place to the next? And what has an influence on those colors? Sometimes it's just the region you're in. You can only have access to certain plants or um, certain, you know, rocks or minerals that had a certain color at one point. Um, or it's religiously tied um, that they use certain colors or based upon your environment. So your what surrounds you, the nature, the patterns, that can have an impact on the color. Um, but one of my favorite things to do is to take a little journal. Um, I just have like a little delusions journal and do a color study of each color yourself. Um, so take the color yellow and I want you to write down everything that comes to mind when you think of the color yellow and then start to break it down from there. You know, when I think of yellow, for uh, for instance, it is. I think of happiness. I think of joy. I think of light. I think of um, sunshine. Um, those are the first things that come to my mind. And then I want you to break those down into where maybe they're coming from. Um, is it? you know, your environment. We live in Colorado, so sunshine is a big part of my life. And so that does bring joy to me. So I automatically connect um, sun and joy together, um, which then connects back to that yellow. But yellow could mean something entirely different to you. But if you start breaking down um, kind of where those beliefs come from, whether it's societal or religious, or maybe you had a memory of a color and it was really wonderful or really bad, um, and, and your mind can, it's like, you know, really connect to the color in a certain way. When I was a graphic designer, we worked with a lot of um, medical offices and private offices and hospitals. And one of the biggest things they told us was not to use red because oftentimes people relate medicine with um, and the color red with blood, right? And, and you didn't always want that unless it were an emergency room where you have some urgency there. But, you know, for a chiropractic office or a naturopathic office, you or a dentist office, people don't want to think about blood. So you wouldn't use the color red. And, and same with your paintings. Um, if I'm working on a portrait that I want a lot of warmth and I want happiness coming out of the portrait, I am not going to be using you know, a ton of cool colors unless I'm using them as a contrast in the background, like someone that's really warm and glowing. And in the background, that cool color can really make it her even more glowing or joyful. So there's so many great techniques to learn through this, but I would highly encourage you to work through, and you don't have to do every color, but try to focus on the primary and secondary colors. So you would do your orange, your purple, green, red, yellow, and blue, and just write down anything that comes to mind with each color. You can also take this in an opposite approach. Um, you could write down, instead of starting with the color, if you are getting stuck, you could you could come up with a concept like joy, and then you can list the colors that, um, that to you are joyous. And that's gonna be different for each and every one of us. Um, or hope or peace. Um, any of those, and you can work backwards where, you know, you, you come up with the word hope um, and then you list colors. And this can really help you because if you want, if you think of a painting and you're, you want a painting to be chaotic, um, maybe you write down the word chaos and then you write down any colors that come to mind and that can help narrow down your color palette so that you really bring 
that emotion um, to your piece. And it might not connect to the viewer. Maybe the color blue is calming to them and it's chaotic to you. Um, but you want to put it out there in the way that it, it, that it resonates with you. It doesn't necessarily have to resonate with everyone because nothing is going to. Um, but you want it to really portray what you feel onto the painting or onto your artwork. Where do I seek inspiration for my colors? And, and the answer is everywhere. Um, but, you know, think of your own environment. I live close to nature. So oftentimes I will go on a hike or a walk and I'll see how the colors play against each other. Um, sometimes the mountains are against a sunset and it's just spectacular, that contrast. And the reason is because it's these complementary colors. It's this blue mountain as the as shaded, and then this orange color, which is complementary to it on the color wheel. So I'm starting to take those principles and apply them to life in order to inspire my palette. Um, I also love looking, I love to travel. So I love looking at textiles. I like looking at markets. Um, you can just have some catalogs or magazines and start tearing them up. So I often have a color journal and then I also have a basket of um, things that inspire me. Maybe it's just one color or maybe it's a combination. Maybe I find a dress um, in a catalog and I tear it up and I throw it in a basket because when I get stuck and I don't know what to do with my color palette, sometimes that's just a great guide or starting point for me to get started on what colors to use. I had studied Nepal recently and um, this is just an example. I had learned about the prayer flags, which I, you know, you see often, um, but then I wanted to really know the significance and meaning behind the colors. And each of those colors used in the Nepali flags have meaning. They represented earth, they represented air, they represented fire. Um, so it really made me really think about the significance and everything um, around us, especially when I was studying other cultures. You know, sometimes the most common colors used were what was what they could source. Um, so in the, for the Mayans, they talk a lot about Mayan blue. Um, they actually sourced that blue and it was really only in certain parts of Mexico. So, you know, that has an impact as well. Um, it's what you have access to. Um, but then, you know, then with trading and, and travel and such as that expanded, other people sought after those colors and brought them back to their own country. Country. So it might not be a color of their country's origin, but they brought it in from elsewhere and how that, you know, had an influence on their own culture and their own environment. So look to your own environment. Um, you know, I live in Colorado. I live in the United States. So I can start breaking it down either by my city, I can break it down by my state, or I can break it down um, on my country. Uh, based on, you know, some of the significant colors used and why they are used. Your color wheel is a great starting point to really start finding your colors. Um, another thing you can do is go to a local paint store and just pull some swatches of colors that you really like um, because everything is going, you're really going to pick out colors that you love. And I talk about this in my other classes, but um, go to your closet. You're going to see what colors you love based on what you surround yourself with. Um, I know that I have a common theme in my clothing and I have a common theme in my own house and my home decor. Um, another thing I love to do, and uh, this is messier than normal, but I like to kind of color coordinate my pastels. And this is a great way for me to start and find my palette um, because these are really accessible. I'm not getting paint out, putting it down, wasting it. I can take this and I can just um, test colors 
pictures right here in my journal. So I can be like, oh, I really, I really want to work with this color. What works well with that? Um, and I can go in and find its complementary color here. Um, I can start, you know, pulling in colors that I think, and I don't even have to put them on the page. I can, you know, just put them next to it and see if I like them. Um, and then just kind of explore with, you know, just a certain page with, and it can be, it doesn't have to be soft pastels. They can be crayons. They can be, you know, a cheap watercolor set. It doesn't have to be anything nice, but it can help you start to come up with these color palettes, um, really, really easily. And then I would just hold on to them. And sometimes you'll be surprised that certain palettes just really work for certain pieces when you go back to them. Um, but this is a great way that I start often. And I have, I have here these little bowls. So what I do a lot of times is once I found a color palette that I like, I just put these, you know, all together in this little bowl, like six colors, and then I can take them to my space and work on them without getting overwhelmed by the other colors. Well, now I have been studying a new country. Um, I did it, you know, without doing classes with it to start, and now I have my art passports courses around it. Um, but this is just, you know, I start with a journal and I use my pastels and some acrylics and I started creating these palettes like I showed you. And then once I narrowed it down, I put it into my journal spread. Um, and, and then I would take that color palette and bring it into all of my work and, and it will change and I'll add different colors. But this was a great way for me to start based on the country because, you know, when I think of Colombia, a lot of the influence was from um, part of the history and then part of the foliage and plants that surrounded the area. Nepal, um, I want to always create, I don't want to just take the colors direct from their patterns or from their prayer flags. I wanted to kind of create my own. So I took their traditional palette and then I added in a couple colors like the pink and turquoise to really make it my own style. But I always have a dark contrasted color in here. Um, but then, you know, here's a little bit more of the traditional palette, which is the prayer frags, the yellow, the green, the red, the white, the blue. And I have here written out the meanings of each um, and what they mean in the Nepali culture. Um, so it's a great way to really kind of study, um, to study colors. So you can see I took that traditional palette and I kind of made it my own um, with the turquoise and the orange and, and just kind of explored that a little bit more in some of my artwork. Um, then Kenya, I, I, I jumped into Kenya, which you know tra traditionally has its yellow, its blue and its red and it's orange and blacks. And how did I make that kind of my own by studying the history, studying the tribes, looking at their jewelry, looking at their textiles, um, and, and bringing that into my own artwork. Um, this is where I took out some of the yellow and orange and I played with adding in some olive greens. Um, and then here I worked on more of a limited palette with the black and white and then really just your kind of earth browns and, and your golds. Um, and here again, I wanted a really stark contrast. So I wanted that yellow and that blue in here that, so to really create a nice contrast in the work. Um, so, you know, play around with it. Um, Japan. I had traveled to Japan. Um, traditionally, I you always saw the cherry blossoms, um, and you know, so that really had an impact. The leaf of the greens, the red. I mean, is symbolic in the gates. It's symbolic in the flags. Um, and then I really wanted to bring in kind of this purplish color um, it, it, and just come up with my own color palette there. So you can start in so many different ways, but this is just a way to show you how I brought in these colors from aspects of the country into my own work. And you can do the exact same at home. You can certainly bring in um, 
you know, if you're, if you live near nature, you can bring those colors in or, you know, um, you know, this was in Mexico, you know, full of color and life and vibrancy. It's also came from the culture. That's why this is so bright is the culture really embodied a lot of that and the textiles and the flowers that surrounded the area. So, you know, take it, take it as you want and, and really bring it into your own work and your own pieces in a way that really, um, that really resonates with you. Oftentimes people ask, what is your color palette? And I, for so long, I struggled with that because I felt like people were either a neutral color palette or natural color palette, or they were a really bright color palette. And I felt like neither. Um, so it took me a little bit uh, to find what my color palette is. Now it doesn't always look the same. I use a lot of different colors. But I want to talk a little bit about that. I love mi mixing natural or neutral colors, whether it's your browns of the earth or um, you know your blacks and grays to bring in that neutral with, or really muted or desaturated colors um, with vibrant jewel tones. Um, that is become to me like my color palette. So I love mixing these earth tones and then bringing in, you know, a bright turquoise or an orange or here, you know, I have muted down colors of this um, kind of fuchsia color. And then I bring in these vibrant emeralds and saffrons, um, cause those are to me my favorite colors, you know, and combining some of this turquoise and this hot pink and amethyst and emerald and sapphire colors with your more neutral colors. Um, same with this, you know, I have my blacks and whites, very neutral. Um, even my khaki color is neutral. And then I brought in that vibrant purple and that, um, you know, emerald or Kelly green to really pop. So play around. You may be completely drawn to neutrals. You may be drawn to vibrant colors, but use those principles of color theory we talked about that are on my blog um, and, and experiment but with the deeper meaning behind the colors and what they represent to you and what you think they represent to other people. And I think you'll really, really help you through the process on what colors to use in your artwork. So thank you so much for joining me. I will have more art fundamental videos here um, and they will always live on my blog. All right, thank you so much.